Okay, folks, so um, I'm going to try and keep this as quick as I can. A few people have been requesting um, that I look over or kind of recap on the, the elements of a successful short story. Don't forget the short story is um, as certain as it can be, it's going to be a task on your composition. Composition's worth 36% this year, so it's very important. And a number of you want to look at the option maybe of um, writing a short story. Now, I always start whenever I talk about, you know, writing um, creative stories, narratives about Stephen King. Stephen King, to me, is one of the great modern writers. And um, he is somebody who has very interesting things to say about um, story writing. And you may remember me mentioning a book called uh, On Writing by Stephen King, which for me is the best thing that um, I've ever read, the best piece of advice I've ever read on how to write stories. Now, if you look at the opening line there, the quote, if you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others, read a lot and write a lot. Now, if you're thinking about writing a short story, you know, it is the last day of May, as I say these words, you know, we're just about a week away from the exam. I wouldn't be going anywhere near it unless I'd been kind of practicing writing short stories over the course of the last two years okay i would not even think about it unless i had some experience but if i had some experience what i do for the next week is i'd read a lot okay i would read a lot i would make sure that i have you know i'm exposing myself to good writing good storytelling and all of the elements of a good story so this section here is um one that comes up every year we know that it's often not done very well for various different reasons. I think a lot of the reason is because students don't understand the genre and they don't get what I keep on telling you about the, the composition that the very first thing the examiner is looking for after you know being on the title is understanding of genre. You know, there's this idea that all you gotta do is tell a story, you just make it up as you go along. And you know, very, very, very rarely is that a successful strategy really good writers they they think they they plot they uh, uh, um, uh, plan their openings they 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 connect the way their story is going to end to the way their story begins before they put the first word on page there's a lot of things to think about before you uh, begin to write a short story now again one of the things is um i keep on saying this year you've got the time but certainly take your time to think out to plot out the, the structure, the plot, the um, the, the um, way your sto story is going to begin, um, how it's going to develop and how it's going to conclude. Think about all of that before you um, begin to write your short story. The questions are increasingly bizarre and tricky. Um, it used to be that the short story option was a very easy option because they'd, they'd give you a photograph of something like, I don't know, a soldier or a child and say okay write a short story inspired by that so as long as it was a soldier in the feckin' story as long as it was a child in the story it was you know it was purposeful now they're much 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 more particular look at it, the following recent questions write a short story set in a railway station in which a passenger off the overnight ferry from Fishguard in Wales plays an important role very 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 specific now that one wasn't the worst title in recent years a railway station is a setting that most of us might be able to you know, conjure up in our minds. And the idea of the passenger coming off the ferry from Fishguard in Wales gives you a starting point. Why were they in Wales? You know, what were they doing? What was the journey like when they arrive at the train station? Is there any, anyone there to meet them? You know, they're, they're, it's, I, I quite like that one. It gave us a framework for a plot. Um, the 2020 one, again, I didn't really like it very much at all. Write a short story in which a crime or mystery is solved that begins with a dramatic arrival. Now, you'd hope that the opening of any story would be somewhat dramatic and draws in. That's okay. But then the idea of a crime or a mystery being solved, again, very narrow. Like you had to really work hard to plot that out before you could write the short story. And this goes to the point that I want to get to early. Some students think that if they learn a story off by heart, they'll be able to just reproduce it on the page, if you like, cheat the system. I highly 
Um, I, I want to warn you against doing that. I think that's a really, really, really bad idea. Now, I'm sure, like most things, it could work out um, for individuals and best of luck to them if they can do that. If they're lucky and they have a story prepared and there's a title there that, that suits that story, then off you go and good luck to you. But for the vast majority of students, when they learn a story off by heart and then try to mold it to fit with a title, it feels artificial and it feels uh, it doesn't it often doesn't work, particularly when you have questions like this one. Write a short story which captures the evolving relationship between two characters, one young and one old, as they travel in a strange land. Very, 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 very specific question. Short story in which the central character status is an outsider has a direct influence on the plot. Again, very, very specific. 2017 was probably the last time there was a really kind of straightforward, simple short story um, title that you could have prepared, you know, a, a, a generic essay in, in advance for and then adapted it. Write a short story in which a tattoo plays an important part in the narrative. So look, be aware of the fact that there will be a short story title on um, the paper and also be aware of the fact that the question will have very specific wording and you must adapt or you must um, um, incorporate that wording into your story. Um, um, and I don't mean superficially, like, you know, one sentence reference. It must be built into the core of the plot of your story. If you don't do that, you're going to suffer. So if you're... Um, thinking about writing a short story, of course, you've got to think about what is the examiner looking for. Now, again, not hard to find out what the examiner is looking for because the marking schemes are published every year. And the very first thing, as I said, after the specifics of the title of the story, you know, passenger getting off a train or a ferry, a fish guard, or, you know, a mystery being solved, is this phrase, understanding of genre, the effective use of some elements of the short story. So, this is the chief examiner writing this down, telling the person who's going to correct your paper that when they read your paper, they, the script should demonstrate your study of the short story as a genre. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, first of all, it means that the examiner has a clear criteria, uh, a clear set of um, you know, principles that they're looking for in a short story. And what you have to do, if you're going to think about the short story, you've got to think about, okay, what are they looking for? If somebody asks me, if I work in a restaurant and somebody asks me for, you know, a, 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 a margarita pizza and, you know, a, a glass of Diet Coke, I've got to bring them what they're looking for. If I don't bring them what they're looking for, they're not happy. So if I am um, writing a short story, I've got to give the examiner what the examiner is looking for. And what the examiner is looking for are the following things. They're looking for a plot. Now, again, this goes back to planning. If there's an absence of plot in your story, if there is no real proof of you working on an exposition, a moment of climax, and a satisfactory rev resolution, if your work is not sequenced, if there's no real sense of connection between the beginning, middle, and end, if it feels open-ended and random, if it feels as if it's just being made up uh, improvised on the spot. Now, there is an element of improvisation in any composition, but if it feels as if you didn't stop before you began and start to think about the structure and the different elements of how to grab the attention of the reader, how to create a moment of tension or a turning point, climax point in the story, how to end the story in an interesting way. If you can't do that, if you can't plot, then don't write the short story. At the heart of a really strong short story is characterization. Okay? Now, we're expecting you, if you're going to write the short story, to develop really interesting characters. Not just give us, don't just give us a physical description of the character. Although it's nice to have, you know, a bit of aesthetic language in a story in which the, the physical appearance of the character and the, um, you know, the different elements maybe you know, the, the smells associated with the character or the sounds the character makes when they speak, those kinds of things. It's nice if, if your imagination is provoked when you're reading a story. It makes the story more involving. But what we're looking for mostly, I suppose, is the psychological character. The, the, you know, what's under the surface. How the character thinks, how they feel, how they react to stimuli or to crisis, okay? The most important thing for me 
is that you don't write about a lot of characters because you've only got you know a short period of time to write your story. So one or two characters build the, the story around that. Then you have things like, you know, the idea of change. I always go back to that wonderful, I think it was 2013, um, on the Junior Cert, or junior cert English exam, Maeve Binchy's letter to her fan club was, was, um, was the text that was used. And it was just a lovely little text. And in it, she, she advised her, her, her um, you know, um, fan club of budding writers, you know, to make sure that the characters go through some period of change in the story, that if a character is the same at the end of the story as they are at the beginning of the story, well, then the story is probably a bit boring. So some element of change in at least one of your characters. I think if there is two characters, you need to have a relationship between those characters that's clear and easy to understand and, you know, around which the story is built. So is that an antagonistic relationship? You know, by antagonistic, I mean like Iago and Othello. Well, Othello doesn't know, of course, it's antagonistic, but you know what I mean? A good guy and a bad guy. Or is it more... Uh, you know, based on um, love and friendship and support, something like of mice and men, you know, George and Lenny, or maybe something like um, you know, the Harry Potter books in which you know three friends face adversity and 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 support each other during that uh, crisis in their lives. But you're looking for characters who are interesting in the sense of learning about their 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 psychology, their emotional response, their background. You want fully drawn characters in any story. A narrative shape is crucially important. There has to be a sense, as I've already mentioned, of continuity. See that word there? Continuity and connectivity. It's often a really good idea to mention something at the start of the story and then to bring it in towards the end of the story. I have examples. Uh, I might I might uh, show you examples. I won't do it in this video, but I might show you a, a, a different... Um, um, on a different occasion but the idea of, of of when I read the story of feeling yeah god what you mentioned there at the end that's why you said that thing at the beginning or when you when you opened the way you opened it was clear that you were intending to build up to this moment of climax this moment of crisis that there must be a sense of a flow a fluency and again that idea of a flow in a story if a story really involves you and engages you and draws you in and makes you forget that you're reading a book and brings you into the world of the story that doesn't happen by accident that's because the writer has given it a narrative shape and by the way something i want to mention really quickly before i move on to the next slide is if you're going to write a story write it in the third person now i hate saying that you know i do i've said this to you before because some of my favorite books of all time are written in the first person but just for the leaving cert avoid writing in the first person as a general rule of thumb because a lot of students when they write their short stories they're actually writing stories based on their own experience and when they write stories based on their own experience in the first person it can feel like it's not a short story but a personal essay and you're likely to lose marks then atmosphere as i mentioned earlier on about the characterization you know description I don't think you can really separate out narrative and aesthetic language. I think you really need to use your aesthetic language skills, your, you know, your sensual language to, 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 to bring colour, to bring substance, to bring life to your story. You know, uh, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald was a oh, strange old guy, really, wasn't he? But like, he was some writer, and The Great Gatsby is really a super book. It's one of those books that... I often, I'm often suspicious of, of people who say, oh, you must read the classics. It's, it has an elite, it smacks of elitism, something I'm, I have an allergy to. But The Great Gatsby really is a super book. And there are just some gorgeous passages in it. Listen to this. Listen to this extract from The Great Gatsby. In his blue gardens, men and girls came and went like moths among the whisperings and the champagne and the stars. His station wagon scampered like a bri brisk yellow bug to meet all trains. You've got two similes there. You've got the onomatopoeia of whisperings. You've got the triadic structure of whis of, sorry, whisperings, champagne and stars. You've got this really scent, this really kind of unusual sense of gardens which are blue. <clears throat> and we expect gardens to be, you know, blue is an unusual colour to use to describe a garden. So what he's doing there is evoking a setting in which his story will unfold. So that idea of being, being able to evoke a setting 
provoke the imagination, draw the reader in, stimulate our senses. That's a very important part of effective storytelling. Now, dialogue is so hard to write. Well, okay, I'll rephrase. Effective dialogue is so hard to write. Now, it's obviously not that hard because I read novels every single day of my life and I read some amazing dialogue all the time. At the moment, I'm, I'm reading a book in which, you know, the dialogue is, is it's just sparkly and feels real and authentic. I suppose that's the most important thing about dialogue. I find it hard to write it because I'm not very good at it. I don't have an ear for it. So when I write dialogue, I think it sounds artificial and forced. What I would say to you is this. If you're going to write a short story, include some dialogue, but don't overdo it. Sometimes students put in too much dialogue in the short story and at the cost of plot or narrative shape. But if you are going to write dialogue, make sure that you don't... I suppose I'm going to give you, you know, two really, I think, important pieces of advice. Don't um, feel under pressure to use lots of interesting verbs to describe when somebody speaks. Often said is a good example. Often said will do. We, we, in class, we looked at the, the writings of Anton Chekhov and he would usually just say said and it worked fine. You know, the, the drama of, you know, um, some of the verb choices can become forced and boring. The other thing is that when you're um, writing dialogue, people don't speak off. Often people don't speak in terms which are grammatically correct. People often use colloquial language. So if you are going to write dialogue, it's fine to use colloquial language within the dialogue. Often people have accents. If you have an accent, um, when the word is spoken, it sounds distinctly different from the way it's written. So often if you want to make a character interesting or authentic, use phonetic spelling to recreate the sounds they make when they speak. Here's a good example. In Mr. Noon's Hall, you just was what you seemed. Acting ain't no subterfuging trickery. Strange music changing things. You thinking along some lines and so you become that new thing. Now there's a really, really, really good example of, um, of dialogue. You know, that is, none of that is grammatically correct. It seems, it's, it's a very distinct and unusual way of speaking, but it gives the character a very... Um, distinctive voice and it makes the story more interesting so be aware of the fact that a story a short story requires dialogue be aware of the fact that authentic dialogue is kind of difficult to write don't write too much dialogue and when you do maybe include colloquial language and phonetic spelling to make the voice sound realistic realistic sorry and believable we know that stories the ones that we really like, the ones that we really enjoy, the ones that really grip us, are stories which contain anticipation, stories which contain tension, plot twists. You know, think about the books that you've read in your life that you've really enjoyed, you know. Um, you know, Margaret Atwood's story, The Handmaid's Tale, is one of the great stories. And in that story, Alfred reflects on, you know, how before... Uh, the, the revolution which brought gave birth to Gilead, we thought we had such problems. How are we to know we were happy? You know, that phrase there is a good example of foreshadowing. Foreshadowing, you know, giving a hint about some crisis or some problem that's going to come later on in the story, creating anticipation, making the reader wanting to know, what do you mean by that? Why, why, what happened? So now I have questions. So now I'm curious and now I'm drawn in. If you are going to create tension, by the way, one of the good ways to do it is to use short sentences. Short sentences can be a very effective way to bring tension to a particular moment in, um, in a story. I already mentioned the narrative voice. I won't uh, go into that. And I'll finish by saying this. The short story is an exercise in imagination. It's an exercise in imagination. And the more creative you are, the more interesting the story is. The marking scheme always refers to originality and freshness. And that's why, again, some people, they write stories which are kind of cliched or hackneyed or predictable. So the idea of being a little bit out there, a little bit, you know, uh, quirky, uh, outlandish in, in, in the, the plotting or in the, 
you know the the narrative that you deliver that can only make the story more interesting but remember that that must not cost at that not come at that must not come excuse me that must not come at the cost of the fundamentals and the fundamentals are p c l m purpose coherence language and mechanics make sure that your story is deals with whatever specific elements are in the wording of the question. Make sure that your story is properly plotted out and that there are connections between the beginning, middle and end which give it coherence. Make sure that you write in a way which is um, syntactically accurate and properly punctuated and easy to read. Make sure that you reread to check for basic errors in spelling we know that mechanics is only worth 10%, but it can take a few vital marks off. If you have an RA, don't worry about that, of course. But make sure in the next, however many days you have left of the exam, eight days, including today, if you are thinking about writing a short story, read good short stories. And as I said earlier on in the year, I gave you a little booklet with some really good ones. Sit down, have a read of them. They might give you some ideas for what comes up in your exam. I think that'll do. Sorry about the croaky voice, it's very early. <laughs>